Did you know that smokers have a 30 to 40% higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes than non-smokers? And of course, studies have confirmed that people who smoke actually are use insulin less effectively, therefore requiring more insulin. And when they are unable to produce more insulin, they develop higher blood sugar readings leading to prediabetes and diabetes. And of course, many studies have already confirmed and we know that science has already proven that nicotine and cigarette smoking poses many health risks, including causing cellular damage, inflammation, oxidative stress, which causes a cellular injury. And of course, that can lead to heart disease, such as a heart attack or a stroke. It can lead to diabetic neuropathy, damaging the nerves, feeding peripherals. And of course, diabetic retinopathy, which is a leading cause of blindness today. And of course, I have a video on diabetic retinopathy, so make sure you guys check it out. I will link it up above at the end of the video. But today, guys, I am not going to talk about traditional smoking. I am going to talk about e-cigarettes because we know that e-cigarette smoking is on the rise and it's become the new thing. Um, there's a lot of people that actually believe e-cigarette smoking is a healthier alternative and that it doesn't pose as much of a health risk as traditional smoking does. But today I am going to talk about e-cigarette smoking and how it has been linked with diabetes. So make sure you guys are watching all the way to the end because this, these new studies are very interesting and something that actually many of us were not aware of because there was not a lot of studies that have been done on e-cigarettes until now. Thank you for tuning in into my channel, The Voice of Diabetes. My name is Diana Butucci and I have an absolute passion for treating diabetes and managing this disease on a daily basis. And of course, I created this channel to help out and reach out to, to as many people as possible to improve the quality of life of those who are living with diabetes and helping people prevent developing diabetes. Um, so let's dive right into it, guys. Let's talk about e-cigarettes and what the new studies are showing. Many of us, of course, as mentioned earlier, we have believed that e-cigarettes are healthier and they might not pose as much health risks as traditional smoking does. But actually, believe it or not, there's a new study that just came out. It's a really a wake-up call for e-cigarette smokers because of the belief that we always thought this was a healthier option and now we're seeing that actually it's not. We did a large study and what it showed is that people who are e-cigarette smokers are at 22% higher risk of developing prediabetes, which we know is a precursor for developing full-blown diabetes. And we know that diabetes is a condition that can cause detrimental defects in our body and can lead us to developing heart attacks, stroke, uh, amputations, and much more. So of course, we wanna always prevent diabetes. The trendy e-cigarettes can also lead to brittle bones. They can lead to erectile dysfunction eating disorders and it can pose alternative health risks but we never knew that there was actually a correlation between e-cigarette smoking directly linked to the pre prevalence of prediabetes and diabetes so this is the first time that we're actually hearing this correlation and it's kind of eye-opening because of course we didn't really know and we could not prove that there was a correlation although i kind of did know because we know the nicotine um, carries chemicals, which of course makes insulin in our body less effectively. So over time, our blood sugars will develop and will become higher, which will of course will lead to prediabetes and subsequently full-blown diabetes. The study that was done at John Hopkins, it, they were able to conclude that there was a direct correlation. So guys, this is really amazing because they studied about 660,000 patients. So it's a large study and they had a group that was, you know, e-cigarette smokers and a group that wasn't, and they saw a much higher risk and a, a much higher percentage of those who were e-smokers actually developed prediabetes in the study. So that is a, a large study, which always is a great thing because we're not saying that, you know, they had, you know, uh, 5,000 patients and that they made the conclusion, but it was almost 700,000 participants, which is, a, 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 that makes it for a great study and great data, of course. Now we kind of know the truths about e-cigarettes and we can take the proper precautions, you know, making sure that, you know, you, you now are aware and hopefully you can quit smoking even e-cigarettes. 
I understand it's not easy. Nicotine addiction is a real thing. But of course, the same nicotine that is found in traditional smoking actually carries the same nicotine as far as cancer causing cells in the e-cigarette smoking. So for that reason, now they are not only linking the cancer, but they're also linking the pre-diabetes component and the spike in blood sugar levels for those who are smokers, e-cigarette smoking and are vaping. Certain areas of the world, you know, um, e-cigarettes, different flavors of e-cigarettes have been promoted to be better whether it may be the kiwi or the green tea. And this research study actually shows that they're all equally as bad and they all are correlated to the same percentage of causing prediabetes. So there's no difference in the kind of flavor that you're actually smoking or vaping because they are the same thing. Um, this research study just came out a few days ago and as I mentioned, it's a very good study. So my goal is obviously I am a big proponent of helping patients quit smoking because I know complications that smoking can, can cause. And I know that it can make managing diabetes so much more difficult. So I'm always taking the extra step to helping patients quit smoking as much as possible, whether it may be a nicotine patch or a nicotine gum, whatever it may be. I'm always working with the patient, counseling them on, 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 you know, helping them quit the addiction of nicotine. And sometimes if patients are not willing to take anything, I always ask them to start smoking one last cigarette a week. And that's actually not a big thing to ask, but over time patients are and have been successful in quitting at completely over time because they're not going through the withdrawal of not having nicotine when they're quitting in a slow manner. And subsequently they can say, you know what? forget it, this is obviously not benefit, benefiting me in any way, not only health-wise, but financially, we know how expensive smoking is. So if you know, you're know you gonna benefit so much more from quitting, not only for your health, but also for your pocket as well. So whatever we can do, make sure that you're always reaching out to your provider and asking what you can do to quit. And you can always reach out to 1-800-QUIT-NOW and smokefree.gov and also cdc.gov slash tips if you need more help and something that can actually help you quit smoking. And of course, as always, always reach out to your doctor and see what options are available um, because smoke uh, quitting now is going to be so much more beneficial for you in the long run. No matter how long you've been a smoker for, we know that quitting makes a huge difference. And they've actually studied lungs of smokers and lungs of smokers who have quit in just three months, it made such a big difference. So whatever you can do guys, whether it's e-cigarettes or traditional smoking, I highly encourage you to quit. And taking all the, all the measures and all the means that you can to quit is crucial. So again, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are new, please support my channel. Consider giving this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys all next time. Take care.